how do I script an Artemis girl like I see in every popular Roblox game? Stay tuned because I will show you the easiest way to do so in less than 10 minutes. This is a tutorial you would find nowhere else and I even have a surprise you would not want to miss. How do we make such a cool skill? Easy. We have two scripts, a local script, a service script, and a remote event to connect the two. To begin, create a local script and start a pack, a service script and service script service, and a folder with a remote event and replicated storage. Name the folder remote events and the remote event armor remote. Open the local script, referenced replicated storage. We referenced replicated storage so we can reference our remote event. Create a variable, equipped, set it to false. Create a function, it does two things. Updates our indicator and tells the server the state of our armor. True for equipped, false for unequipped. Testing now will lead to no results because we haven't told our function when to run. Our function should run when a player clicks an intended key. To check if a player clicks a key, we can use this whole block of code, blah, or we can replace all of that with one line of code using Fenmord. Fenmord in the description. After inserting Fenmord into replicated storage under a folder called modules, reference it. With this easy line of code, we can run the function whenever the key E is pressed. Test again, and everything works as it should. Onto our service script. Copy the first three lines of actual code from our local script and paste it into the service script. Then set up a function that waits to receive the message sent through our remote event from the local script. First variable is always the player and the second whatever message we send, which in our case is if the armor is equipped or not. Next, check if the player is trying to equip the armor. If so, do something. Right now, print a message. If not, then we're trying to unequip the armor. Also print a message. Test and as you can see, works perfectly. Since it works, the next step is to show the armor. But how do we make the armor connect to the player? By welding. If you haven't already, grab your armor. And if you don't have, surprise, mine is in the description. You're welcome. But stay tuned because I do have another surprise you don't want to miss. Weld the armor parts to the rig part you want to connect to using any way that's most comfortable to you. Just make sure the weld is located somewhere in the armor, its part 0 is the armor piece, and its part 1 is the rig part. I personally like using Easy Weld. To use this plugin, select the armor part, hold control, select the rig part you want to weld to, and click Easy Weld. Like that, we have our weld. Do the same for each piece of the armor until it is all welded. Here is what mine looks like for reference. Making sure all parts of your armor have cancolite and anchored set to false and massless set to true. Drag your armor into replicated storage. One more important thing. Publish your game, go to game settings, avatar, and set it to whatever rig you used. Back to our service script. We reference the character, then we clone the armor and name it whatever we want. I name mine the player's name plus armor. That way each player's armor has a unique name. Finally, I print it to workspace. If we test now, we notice nothing happens. That's because we have to program the weld in. Watch closely, the next steps are very important. First, we loop through every part of the armor. Then, we check if the part we loop through is a weld. If it is, then we check if our character has the part the armor is welded to. If so, then we weld our armor piece to the corresponding player part. This allows for easy switch outs of armor without changing any of the script. Now, if we test, our armor is visible. Next, we need to remove the armor when our player deactivates the skill by clicking the key again. We can do this easily by going right here. The else of our if statement. First, referencing the armor using its unique name and checking if the armor exists. If so, destroy it. Test and it works. But wait, 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 wait. There is still one last part of the armor you wouldn't want to miss. We find everything works fine, but the activation and deactivation is 
clunky. By tweening its transparency, we can have a much smoother effect. First, let's tween its activation. Below checking if the part is a weld, we can check if the part is a base part. If it is, then we make the part invisible. We make the part invisible, so through a transition or a tween, it becomes visible, creating a fade in effect. Next, let's make the armor fade out when we deactivate it. Where we destroy the armor, replace the line of code with a loop through every part of the armor. Once again, we check if the part is a base part. If so, we tween its transparency to one. Then if your armor has particles like mine does, you want to check for that and disable it for a nice transition, for a nice transition, for a nice transition, instead of the particle just vanishing. Then to give our transition ample time to take effect, we use game data debris to destroy the armor in half a second. Don't leave yet because there's a surprise coming soon. Now we test it and as we can see, it works amazingly well. As a thank you for sticking to the end, here is another free armor. Shout out to Phoenix Xara for generously providing. Link in the description. Name random link. If you enjoyed the video, try checking out this video on my channel you might also enjoy.